I had just finished my high school years, so I was in the first year of university studying in economics and playing rugby on the National League. So I was an average guy, not a very good student, a good sportsman, an average Uruguayan guy. I, I invited my mother and my sister to go on the trip with us. I gave them a present of uh, love because I wanted them to share the weekend with the team in Santiago and, uh, and luckily not always things go as we wish they would go. So we crashed on this plane, they died on impact and uh, I was knocked out on, in, on impact. I was in a coma, a big, big coma for four days. And then I woke up and uh, I realized I was in the middle of the mountains and uh, on a completely destroyed airplane. It's almost two and a half months over there at, you know, 14,000 feet, no food, no water, no rescue. So many things uh, happened. Uh, one of the initial things that clicked the survival instinct was the radio that we heard 10 days after the plane crashed. We had a small transistor radio and we heard that the search had been called off, that we were all dead. That was a very big turning point which decided a lot of things. Leadership evolves in these situations, you know, not because anybody wants to be a leader. Leaders evolve because of the situations. Marcelo Perez del Castillo, he was our captain, a fantastic guy with the biggest heart I've ever seen. And uh, 10, 15 minutes after the plane crash, he was already our captain. The best decision I've ever seen is Marcelo's decision. About two hours after the plane crashed, he decided, he turned around and there was no airplane, just a big opening and the wind and the cold was coming in through that opening. And he said, helicopters do not fly at night. They won't rescue us tonight. They will rescue us tomorrow, but we will freeze. Initially, he started to take care of the wounded guys, helping them to get out of the seats where they were, some with broken legs, you know, because of the impact of the crash. Marcelo, the most fantastic leader I've ever seen, collapsed as a leader. Why? He was 21. For 10 days, he kept the whole team in his shoulders, embracing each one of us and saying, hey guys, trust me, rescue is coming, you know? And now the radio told him that we were all dead. So he said, this is my responsibility. I chartered the airplane. I organized the trip. I told you to bring your family members. I reserved the hotel in Santiago. This is my fault. And uh, he couldn't take it. On limit situations, real limit situations, nothing gets better, everything gets worse, until you die or you are rescued. And that's what happened. Everything was spiraling down on our ordeal until two and a half weeks after we crashed, an avalanche hit the airplane. And it was a huge avalanche at night. It destroyed, the, it, it just went into the back of the airplane. So it destroyed that very, thin wall of suitcases and of the 27 guys that were inside the airplane that night it buried 27. In darkness what do you do? In that moment leadership evolved to two other guys who were very young you know 18 and 19 because they were the doctors they were taking care of the wounded guys and they were the ones who were taking the, the big decisions saying okay give me your shirt I need your shirt to make a bandage Luckily, two of the guys were not uncovered and those guys started a chain reaction. And you cannot, you cannot breathe under an avalanche. It's like being underwater. So you, we had two minutes, two minutes and a half of time only to live under the snow. Uh, these guys acted very fast because the, you have to think that this was in complete darkness. No? So everything changes geographically, everything changes inside. It's complete darkness. And once they reached an amount of snow they couldn't take out, they knew where the heads of the guys were. So they started digging shafts, you know, shafts about one yard long to reach the faces of the guys and give them air. That was a fantastic decision. The first big decision I've ever seen in my life is Marcelo building that wall. The second one, these guys, without any survival training, deciding to build shafts to give air. Can you imagine in a panic situation, everybody trying to look for the bodies? This guy said, oh no, only the faces, you know? And they, once they got to a face, they, leave him, they left him, they went to another one. So it was uh, the, the most extreme kind of thinking under stress situation I've ever seen. I think that we were very lucky because one of the best 
things that we had is that we were a team before. Had this happened on a commercial airliner, maybe things would have been quite different.